Greetings, greetings, and thank you so much for joining us today, February 6th, 2022. And you are now listening to the podcast of R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss topics relevant to the appeal of Robert Sylvester Kelly and give discussion of topics we have heard over the week by Kelly Nation fans. Thank everyone who faithfully comes on the live podcast every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So today we are gonna jump right into the topic. We have some appeal information that should put some of our Kelly Nation fans a bit more at ease. On February 1st, 2022 at 11.30 a.m., attorney Jennifer Bonjean tweeted some important information. First of all, she quotes, we look forward to sharing our post trial motion on February 17th, 2022. Thank you for supporting R. Kelly. She went on to say on the same tweet thread that quote, we filed a letter motion seeking an additional two weeks to file Mr. Kelly's post trial motion. It is imperative that Mr. Kelly be afforded meaningful opportunity to consult with his counsel which has been hampered by the Metropolitan Detention Center's visitation policies. The motion was granted. And at 1131, she tweeted, quote, understandably, many people are concerned about Mr. Kelly's health and well-being, but there is no question that the MDC's COVID policies are putting all men inmates in harm's way, end quote. There's been a miscarriage of justice relating to the conviction of Robert Sylvester Kelly, period, point blank. I refuse to go with the conviction um, due to the way that the court handled themselves during the, the federal trial. Um, who they let testify and who was unable to testify. The fact that Robert Sylvester Kelly, even back last year was uh, or year before last, was unable to consult with Greenberg, his attorney, because of the COVID-19, you know, pandemic situation. Who these people are and why they're doing what they're doing, we will eventually know. Give it about five or 10 years, maybe 20, we'll definitely know. It's just a lot of unanswered questions that I have about people who have turned on him during this process and period, point blank, an overturn of his conviction should be granted. And that's it, point blank. That's how I see it. Bon Jean, attorney Jennifer Bon Jean has been through a situation as well with the Cook County judge that if, it were not for her own self-worth and esteem, she may have been affected by some of these statements. They were sexist and offensive. And I believe that a lot of this is going on primarily because she is standing up for Robert Sylvester Kelly. If you have not heard the podcast, you wanna go to WGN Radio and select the podcast dated January 16th, 2022 on the Karen Conti show. It was a very informative and formative straight to the point where attorney Bonjean is given the details. And I won't give them here because this is about Robert Sylvester Kelly. But in this segment, Bonjean stated that she was insulted on a hot mic after um, the court started talking about her personal appearances and negative statements were given from both men and women in that courtroom. And I believe she has now filed a complaint against this Judge Reigns and a new judge has been granted to oversee the case. And this case was about a man wrongfully sentenced for 20 years. And this was his appeal process. Instead of discussing the fate of his release, the court was discussing attorney Bonjean's appearance and being downright unprofessional. When do we hold the courts accountable? I mean, I'm a criminal justice major with a master's degree in criminal justice. And this is appalling to me to say that I am part of a system that continually disrespects individuals 
like their lives, you know, if everyone would treat this as this is my life that is on the line, I think, you know, these judges would really be a little more um, respectful. But um, like I said, I didn't want to go too deep into that, but I wanted to just give you a gist of what was on that podcast so you'll kind of understand when you start to listen. But we'll go back to Robert Sylvester Kelly. I am so happy to hear the good news about his post-trial motions being granted. So what is so what is this phase about in the appeal process? And where is he right now um, relating to the legalities of his case? So if you lose a case um, in trial as a result of an apparent error on behalf of either um, the jury, uh, you can file a post-trial motion to correct the error. You might file a motion for a new trial based on an error in the jury's verdicts. So that means the jury may not have heard something, um, may have heard something in a different way. Some people weren't able to speak on behalf of Robert Sylvester Kelly during his trial. And they looked at that as, say, possibly uh, a judgment. And that swayed them on their um on their ruling, you know, was he guilty or was he not? Another type of uh, post-trial motion is a motion for judgment, notwithstanding the verdict. Now we will wait until the legal documentation has been stamped by the clerk of courts to make this official. Um, in Cook County, so we will see which motion Bon Jean did file on behalf of our wonderful friend, R. Kelly. There are three common post-trial motions, which include a motion to dismiss, a motion for judgment of acquittal, or motion for judgment notwithstanding the verdict. So the appeal process has taken flight. The pandemic could cause a bit of a turbulence, but all in all, things are looking pretty stable. God, it feel like we are all in in uh, the military. <laughs> we didn't even sign up for it. <laughs> I was asked to also do another investigation relating to the location for Robert Sylvester Kelly. Where is he at now? And if someone wanted to write him, where would they go? Because they have there there is a few places that people are telling people um, to send you know, cashier's checks, be very, very careful of that. Um, but anyway, I spoke with a few people who have written um, post-cashier, post-cashier's checks to R. Kelly, and this information has been received. And Robert Sylvester Kelly's inmate number is 09627-035. He is located at the Metropolitan, he is still at the Metropolitan Detention Center, P.O. Box, three two nine zero zero two in brooklyn new york and the zip code is one one two three two if you want to go to any official site please go to the bureau of prisons at bop bureau of prisons dot gov bop um, if you would like to directly send money to R. Kelly, you can deposit money in person at the MDC or at Civic Plaza Northwest City Hall in New York City or by mail. And there are strict rules that you must review when sending money. And finally, you can send money online to start the process. You just want to go to the BOP.gov. That is the official governmental website and click on access corrections and all steps are on the BOP.gov site. Please be mindful that you are doing your research before you're sending any money. I also contacted 718-840-4200 and they had an audio instruction on how to send money as well in all of the different ways that you could. Money, letters, cards, all that. Finally, I want to share a Kelly fan email that came this week from Miss B. Brassfield. And she writes, hi, I am grateful for your Appeal TV. 
and how you commit to keeping the information coming regarding our beloved brother, R. Kelly. You spoke on a segment last week about the children. I agree. The kids will eventually feel the sadness of what their mother has done to their lives and their father's lives. Keep giving us the 411 on what you find and may God bless our loved, beautiful Robert. Thank you so much, um, Miss B. I think that we need to remember that judgment is all about looking within us. And, you know, if we can judge someone else, we can definitely be judged. So I can't say Robert is innocent or guilty. I do not even worry about that anymore. Um, I do worry about the verdict and following this appeal process to see if the legalities are, are correct. Did they follow the law? Did um, they play on the world's emotion in order to trap him up on the RICO Act just because they wanted to get, get him? And if they wanted to get him and they did not follow the law, you cannot win. As Bon Jean says, you cannot win a basketball game if you are breaking the rules and you're not playing the game the correct way. So um, until I see the outcome of this appeal, I will definitely, you know, do what I need to do to keep doing my research. One thing I definitely do want to share that I do know is being real when things are happening. Silence can be a killer. Ladies, gentlemen, children, it doesn't matter. You know, please be honest, be real, be true, because what we speak out of our mouths can put someone, incarcerate someone for life. So we must be careful, but we um, always must, must, must tell the truth, you know, tell the truth, tell the tr truth and shame the devil, because that's what we need to do. And we need to do the telling immediately. You know, I understand Miss uh, um, Andrea Kelly stating that, you know, there's no time limit on her pain. I get it. I so get it. But... 30 years, 40 years later, please don't come with that. You tell it now, tell it immediately, whether you're being emotionally abused, physically abused, verbally abused, or financially abused. The longer you wait, the less there will be people who believe you. And there should be a statute of limitations on, you know, rape and incest and all of this stuff. You know, I mean, this is just a thought of mine. What are your thoughts? You know, you may feel some kind of way. You may be a victim and you're listening to this and you're like, you're full of bull crap because I couldn't get out. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't tell. So give me your points of view. Um, and yes, you know, sharing this information to individuals are about just opening our eyes and getting our points of view out there for people to feel confident and comfortable in knowing that they're not alone. You know, whether we believe that Robert Sylvester Kelly did this or not, you know, I don't really and truly believe that he did do all of this. Maybe, you know, it's, it's there's a thin line between many different things that happen in this world. So we can't say 100%. I'm putting my name on the line. I had a one of my clients tell me, I will never put my name on a line, not even for you. And I said, oh, because that's all I have. That's it. That's all I have in my life is my name. So, you know, that's what Robert should do. And another individual talked to me last week and said that what he needs to do is just cut everybody off. You know, I hope he's not just reaching out emotionally because of the circumstance that he's in right now. And I hope he's really doing some inventory on himself so that whatever happens from this point, he's able to truly feel the energy of change and transition and growth, you know? And that's where I think his success is going to lie because I truly do 100% believe, and I know you guys may call me crazy, but I do believe that he is going, his, his verdict is going to be overturned. It's either going to start all new again, or they're going to take from the 
from the federal trial and look at all the things, all the errors, and just three or four of them, you know, I can think of right now, three errors that the court, that the trial court made. So I don't know, but we'll sit back and look, this is not, well, I call, you know, I did say that I was going to look at this as like a basketball game or a political, you know, um, running because that's what it feels like. It doesn't even feel like a, a, a person's life is on the line right now because we're, we're just so desensitized. We're desensitized. Um, guys, I just... Thank you so much for joining, liking, sharing, subscribing, and actually commenting on this podcast and listening to it every week. And as always, keep it 100 and we will see you next time.